My name is Nicholas Graham, and welcome to series one of hazard identification and risk assessment. In the previous video, we did an introduction looking at some of the concepts and what we're going to be looking at in the six series that we're going to do on hazard identification and risk assessment. In this series, we're going to have a look at some of the key concepts and definitions that's going to set a framework for us to be able to successfully perform a risk assessment for your organization. So we're going to have a look at why. It's always key to start off with the why. I always like what Simon Sinek has to say, that you have to understand the why. So what is the why behind hazard identification and risk assessment? Well, ultimately, we want to achieve the intended outcomes of the management system. And some of the intended outcomes of your management system, whether it be safety and health, environmental or quality, the intended outcome is to prevent injury and ill health, to prevent pollution and environmental degradation, to ensure that you're meeting your business needs and those of your customers, to ensure compliance to legal and other requirements, to improve your performance, to continually improve your check management system and to achieve your objectives. So if those are some of the intended outcomes of your management system, we need to identify hazards and we need to assess risks with the idea that we want to be able to eliminate risks or we want to be able to control risks in order to aid our management system in achieving the intended outcomes. So if we wanted to try and understand the why behind hazard identification and risk assessment, it's all about the intended outcomes. We want to identify hazards, we want to assess risk, we want to eliminate it or minimize it in order to be able to achieve those intended outcomes. So what is a, a risk assessment. So ultimately a risk assessment is a process of evaluating risks that are associated with hazards and taking into account the adequacy of existing controls. You might say you have controls in place, but are they actually working? You may issue personal protective equipment to people, but are they actually wearing it and are they wearing it effectively? So we need to evaluate hazards we need to take into account the adequacy of existing controls in order to determine if the risk is acceptable. Now that point over there, the acceptability of risk is another very interesting question that we'll go into uh, during a later vlog. So ultimately the question that we pose now that we'll ask, answer in another series is, who gets to determine whether risk is acceptable? Is it just the managing director of the company who possibly has to represent the organization in a court of law? Or is the employee also empowered to have an understanding of whether risk is acceptable? I know the mining industry has it built into their regulations where the employees can remove themselves from a workplace that they consider to be harmful or dangerous. So we'll get into that in a later vlog series. So how do we perform hazard identification and risk assessment? Well, one of the first steps is to identify hazards. This can be done through a multi multitude of different tools, and we're gonna look at that in series two. So series two is gonna be how we use the various different tools to identify hazards. So some of the tools that we can use for hazard identification are observations. We can use um, JHAs, job hazard analysis, job safety analysis. We can use both internal and external information, material safety data sheets, um, information on plant and equipment. The manuals that are supplied with plant and equipment are a great source of information on hazards and safe practices associated with the use of plant and equipment. Also checklists and report. And during series two, we'll take you through a variety of different um, examples of job hazard analysis of various different checklists and report that you can use to extract hazards from a, an activity, product, service, substance, etc. So once we've identified hazards, we then want to determine who or what is at risk and how are they at risk? Is it a human being? Is it an environment? Is it the product or service, etc.? We're then going to take you through an understanding of risk analysis and risk evaluation. Now, one of the things I wanted to throw out at this particular point in time, and it would be interesting to get some comments with regards to this on our blog, is what type of risk assessments do you think you're performing? Is it qualitative? Is it semi-qualitative? quantitative or is it a quantitative risk assessment? And let me throw this question out there. I think a lot of people think because the risk matrices that they use has numbers on it, they think that they're calculating risk and they think that their risk assessment is quantitative. When in essence, in many cases, those numbers may be quasi numbers, etc. So 
a qualitative risk assessment is a subjective risk assessment. And a lot of the, the risk assessments that we perform are subjective. It's based on the skills, education of those people who are going to participate in the risk assessment. So a lot of the risk assessments that we will use in the safety and health or the quality field will be qualitative, subjective. However, the, the majority of risk assessments that I see are either qualitative or semi-quantitative. And what I mean by that is within your risk assessment, you may have some factual data. Is You'll have considered um, accident trends, you will have considered various different factors and reports and information. So your you could say that in a semi-quantitative risk assessment where you have some empirical data to consider that is factually and analytically based, you could say that your assessment is semi-quantitative. Is It is subjective, but there is also some factual analytical data such as incident trends, etc., associated with hazards and tools and equipment that you can put into your risk assessment that will make it semi-quantitative. Then you also have a quantitative risk assessment. Now, as an example for that, there you're using analytical data. Now, the information supplied in a material safety data sheet, such as OEL, occupational exposure limits, and LC50 and LD50, lethal concentration or lethal dose 50, LC90, LD90, all of that is hard science, factual evidence, analytical data that people can provide to be able to formulate an understanding of risk associated with a particular chemical. So in many cases, when they're doing a chemical risk assessment, that may be a quantitative risk assessment based on concrete scientific data. So when we do the risk assessment, the challenge and the question that I'm asking you is, are your risk assessments qualitative? Are they semi-quantitative or fully quantitative? So after we've done our risk assessment, we're then going into recording that. We're looking at an action plan as an output to risk evaluation. Are we going to transfer, treat, tolerate, etc.? And then also, your risk assessment is a continual process. It's never, I, I don't believe that you can hit risk assessment nirvana because you establish a risk assessment, more information comes to light and you're continually improving and updating your risk assessment. So we've looked at the why of a risk assessment, we've looked at what it is, we've looked at a very simplistic how. Who are the people that are going to participate in your hazard identification risk assessment process? So these are some of the suggested participants. Some are in fact required by law, such as your safety representative, the person who represents the workers. So safety reps, workers, supervisors, occupational health and occupational hygiene specialists, occupational health nurse, occupational health doctor, your occupational hygienist can be participants in that, Man managers and of course your safety, health and environmental and quality team. So those are some of the participants in the risk assessment. So let's have a look at some of the key definitions. A hazard, so we're looking at hazard identification risk assessment, and this is taken, yes, it's from a, an older standard, but I always liked the definition from OSHA 18,000 where it says a hazard is the source, situation, or act with the potential for harm. Now, there are more updated definitions in terms of ISO 45,000, but I, I always liked this because I felt that it portrayed quite a nice graphic image of, of how to extract hazards. So if I'm standing there with a drill and I'm drilling into the wall, what are the hazard sources? So the drill is going to provide a multitude of hazard sources, such as noise, vibration, dust, fumes, swarf, live electricity, are going to be a, a wide array of hazard sources that are going to be generated by the use of the drill. Also, what about the, the situation that I find myself in? Am I drilling in a confined space? Am I drilling in an open area? That's also going to have an influence on it. And also, what about the, the situation? So I find myself in a particular situation, and then the, which could be the, the work environment um, hazard sources, but also the act. Remember that when I'm drilling, the piece of equipment that I'm using has hazard sources, the work area has hazard sources, but also my biomechanical movement, such as lifting, carrying, twisting, etc., can also provide sources of harm. So I always quite like that definition of a hazard, being the source, situation, or act with the potential for harm. Now, harm to what, you may ask? I always like to link that into the intended outcome. So it's going to be harm to people, the planet, your product, your service, non-compliance, harm to the business, harm to the management system and the objectives. So now let's have a look at a risk. 
what is a risk? Remember that when we had a look at a risk assessment, a risk assessment is evaluating risks, associating with hazards, taking into adequacy, um, taking into control or consideration the adequacy of existing controls. Now, a, a risk is the combination of the likelihood. What is the chance? What is the potential? What is the likelihood for that accident or for me to be exposed to harm? But here they talk about a, an unwanted event, a hazardous event. So what is the likelihood, the combination of the likelihood of a hazardous event occurring? Let's say I was drilling and I didn't have eye protection on. What is the likelihood of me getting dust particles or swarf or something from the drill into my eye? And then if that unwanted event occurred, what would be the expected consequence? Would I lose my eye? Would I just have a slight injury, etc.? So that's a good way of understanding a risk. So thanks very much for, in, uh, for joining us for, for this series in hazard identification and risk assessment. We've looked at some of the foundational principles. We've looked at why we want to do a risk assessment. We've looked at what is a risk assessment. We've also looked at how uh, we're going to perform a risk assessment, who's going to be uh, involved in the risk assessment, and also what are some of the key definitions. So this was series one in hazard identification risk assessment. We trust you're going to join us for series two when we look at